Leslie, my question was going to be, at what point is it like, you know, was it a, a danger, not a danger, but like a risk is from, from a physicality standpoint of playing basketball, being pregnant, right? So there's track athletes who are seven months pregnant and they're still competing or maybe even eight, depending. But, um, you know, at what point did your doctor say like, hey, it's good till you play up to, till now, but, you know, if, if somebody bangs you pretty hard, there could be a risk. Right. I didn't really know much about it before it happened. And that's always in the back of your mind. And um, doctors usually tend to err on the more cautious side of things because really you just don't know, you know, every, every woman is different. Every body is different. Um, but I had read some things online, um, talked to other doctors, talked to other players who had been pregnant. And really that first trimester, what you have growing inside of you is so small and it's so well protected that the risk is pretty low. And I don't know about you, Mike, but I think about my playing days and I hardly ever got elbowed in the directly in the stomach, like hardly never. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It kind of, it'd be so random and so kind of out of character. I mean, right. yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, taking a charge. Okay. But once I knew I was pregnant, I wasn't taking charges, you know, I was like, I, I, I wasn't throwing myself on the ground for like a loose ball. So I was trying not to be like the weak link, you know, but I wasn't going out of my way to like sacrifice my body to say the least. Um, so they told me that after 12, 13 weeks, I should probably hang it up. And to be honest, towards the end, I was like, I'm ready to stop because there were days I was really tired at practice. Um, or I was taking a nap before going to practice and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get up and go run up and down the floor. Um, and then this side note here for you guys, but like every woman is different, but my adductors, like my whole area down there was so sore. And so just running up and down the floor, like lifting my leg, even in bed when I would turn over and I had to like shift my legs from one side to the other, it was worse than any like weight workout I'd ha I had ever done. And I was like, is this normal, you know? But then once I stopped playing, um, that pain slowly went away. So I don't know if that's my body adapting or if it was just like, uh, I wasn't, you know, demanding so much of my body anymore. And so then I was feeling better. How were you with morning sickness in the beginning that did you have that at all or no, or it's, uh, that's also a funny question because we call it morning sickness. And, um, but really for a lot of women, it lasts throughout the whole day. Um, I felt queasy pretty much all day, every day. I, I didn't really throw up hardly ever. I threw up once on the bus, um, but it was just like, yeah, just not feeling great. So, and, and so then you would, you know, you'd have to go to practice feeling like, I, I, am I going to puke? Like, and just gut through that. Right. I mean, that was kind of, yeah. I think when I was in motion and when I was exercising, I tended to feel better. And I don't know if it was like a mental thing where I was kind of disconnecting and I forgot about the fact that I was pregnant. Um, but usually I felt worse when I was just like sitting around. So I don't know. That's interesting. It's a good distraction to have to be there practicing and playing basketball. Definitely. Um, so what I wanted to bring up earlier is, is we were doing some research because I was asking my wife who's Spanish about kind of the rights that you have as a mother in Spain and you're married to a Spanish, uh, a Spanish guy and what we read is that you have 16 weeks of maternity leave and he also has 16 weeks of maternity leave once the baby is born paternity. which paternity leave sorry my bad um but that's pretty cool so then we dug a little bit deeper and this is what i want to ask you about now is because in 2018 it was actually a kind of a hot news topic of women athletes getting pregnant and some of them in their contracts had a no pregnancy clause that they could not get pregnant within like during the season. Was that ever a thing? Did you ever hear about that or? I had never heard about that. Are you talking WNBA or are you talking overseas? I'm, ta I'm talking in Spain. It was, it was a big, big news topic in Spain. Yep. What? I feel very uh, silly for not hearing about that, but I feel like that's got to be illegal. Yeah, that was the thing because they were, they, they deemed it illegal. And, uh, but I was just, 
I had never heard of anything like that. It sounds very illegal just from the the nature of it, but I wasn't sure if you had you had heard of it or if any if any of your teammates had that type of clause or maybe you had that type of clause, but nothing, huh? Yeah, I definitely didn't have anything like that in my contract. And when I was talking to my coach the summer before, like because the sum the year before I had had my best season of my career. So then that summer I had to decide if I was going to keep playing or not. And I was like, ugh, what do I do? Because I, I think, you know, as a family, we want to start trying this. And uh, so I talked to the coach and he didn't mention any of that. And in fact, um, he said they couldn't put anything regarding pregnancy in my contract because it just wasn't, it wasn't legal. Like that's just not how it works. Um, I, won- I wonder if that's because it was after 2018. I wonder if it would have been before that if the, I mean, it- also, Estudiantes is a reputable club. They take care of their players pretty well. So I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. But even so, I don't know why they would even come up with something like that because it's not like women are getting pregnant in the masses. You know, like it's not like there are a ton of players that are having to stop playing every season because they're pregnant. That's not the case. Like very few, it happens not that often. And as you can't even really, decide when you're going to get pregnant. You know, like I said, some women try for a year or more, you know, it's like, who knows if, and our season is only eight months long. So it's really not even that long, but that's really interesting, Mike. I'll have to ask around about that because I, I was unaware. Leslie, for the last like few years, have, were you like, this is, you know, were you debating this in your mind, like kind of the trade-off between continuing to play and, and thinking about starting a family? Like when did this thought process start and then obviously you know kind of crescendo to the point that it's at um it's been in the back of my mind and it's difficult as an athlete because you love this game and you've been playing it uh, for as long as you can remember and it's like what you know and what makes you happy it's like a drug you know I mean I get to exercise for my for my job and I have like social aspect thrown in there and the adrenaline of competing um but my husband is about almost five years older than I am. So he's 41 and I'm 35, about to be 36. And when you, when you sit down and look at the stats, it's like time doesn't wait for anybody. And uh, whether you're ready to hang it up or not, you might regret it if you don't start trying at a certain age, because you just don't know what's going to happen. So fortunately I was kind of getting to the point where I was like, I think I've played a good my good chunk of years and I'll, I'm ready to start this next chapter. We'll see what happens. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then I'll keep playing the rest of the the season. Um, But it is difficult because a man doesn't really, I don't know, Mike, in your opinion, but I feel like men don't really have to think about that. You know, their wife can have the child and they don't have to sacrifice their, their playing years really. No, it's, it's a thousand percent true. And I think it's just, you know, obviously you, you're the one that has to give up what you choose and love to do. Like, even you say from a physical standpoint earlier, like you were getting to the point where it's just like, it's not, it's not even worth it anymore. And for a guy, that's not even, that's not even a factor. Right. And I I can't imagine a a male basketball player talking to his coach and being like, so coach, uh, my wife and I are thinking about getting pregnant next season. So I don't really know, you know, like that conversation just doesn't happen. And for me, I had friends telling me, Leslie, you don't have to tell your coach anything. That's your personal private life. It's a, your job is a job, just like any other job. You don't have to say anything. But for me, I was like, oh, I don't know. My job is a job and I'm under contract, but it's a team. And I know it's really hard to sign players in the middle of the season. And um, I just, it's that team mentality in me. And I, I told them that, you know, this is what we were thinking and, in the end, I'm glad that I decided to share the news so that during the season when I called him up and I told him, hey, coach, I took a pregnancy test today and it came back positive. He was really happy for me. And it wasn't like this, you know, wasn't a surprise. Um, so I my conscience, my conscience was clean. Um, but at the same time, I think, well, should I even have to think like that? Like, I don't know. Yeah, you're right, though, Leslie, as far as the it's a complicated situation. It's not like you're working in an office in a cube where you can literally go into work every single day up until 
the point, you know, that your water breaks and you're ready to have the kid. Um, and there's an inter dependence of your teammates relying on your physical ability, right? So at some point, your physical ability will become compromised, not as far as what you can do, but like we were talking about with the risk of the baby and, you know, you you feel like ethically, you, you owe it to the team to be straightforward and honest about it rather than just blitzing everyone like, oh, Leslie's done now. I <laughs> say, guys, sorry. So, you know, you're right legally, you absolutely don't have to tell anyone, but I think from like a moral standpoint, as far as the teammates, and like you say, they're your friends and people you care about, um, you want to want to just quote bail on them, right? Even though you're doing the right thing for you and your family, and this is what you want to do, and it's what you should be doing, but certainly you do feel some type of obligation to them. Right. And I don't know if, uh, Mike, you read about, or Ray, uh, Skylar Diggins, who I'm sure you guys know who that is, but, you know, she's a WNBA player who's a top player for the Phoenix Mercury. And uh, when she got pregnant a couple of years ago, she literally didn't tell anybody. And she played, I think, until she was about 14 weeks. Um, and I think it was at the very end of the season. So like the team doctor didn't know, her coach didn't know, nobody knew. She was just holding the secret. And she didn't tell anybody because she didn't know how she would be treated. She didn't know what her benefits were going to be. She didn't know what her contract the following year was going to be. And so as a female, you do feel like, gosh, do I want to say anything? Because I don't know if they're going to pay me the same amount. I don't know if they're going to respect my contract. I don't know. You know, there's just a lot of things that go through your mind. And at the end of the day, this is my salary, you know? And so it's not just that I'm giving up playing basketball, but it's I'm potentially going to be either paid less or not signed or, you know, and it's interesting, Mike, because um, football or soccer here in Spain on the women's side, they have better benefits than we do. And if a soccer player gets pregnant during her season, the team automatically signs her for the next year. I did not know that that is, but I will say at the same time, the soccer money is a little bit different than the basketball money in Spain. I'm not aware of how much they make. So I have no idea. But, but, uh, but ultimately to Leslie's point is it's, it's a more evolved process where it's automatic. Um, and there are more women playing basketball in Spain than there are women playing soccer in Spain. So you would think that we would have better benefits, but technically according to the law here in Spain, we're still not considered professionals mm -hmm. and that has to change. Even, even at the top level, even at the top level, you're talking players that are making 10 grand a month. Um, not very many of them, but there are, and we're not considered professional according to the rule book, the laws. Why? Well, in the ACB, how does it work, Mike? There's a minimum salary. Uh, yep. The ACB is also a private entity. But in Liga Femenina Endesa, we don't have a minimum salary. Um, we don't have, I don't know. There are lots of... Well, it's all run through the Feb, right? So it's run through the Spanish Federation of Basketball. And they are notorious up front of just spending, I would say, in absurd percentage of their capital on the national teams the national teams are a big deal here in spain and i actually was just talking to a teammate about it this morning in the summer when it comes time for the olympics or euro cup or in world championships spain loves to talk about their basketball teams because they're really good and i just think to myself okay but put your money where your mouth is and make liga femenina endesa the highest category in spain make these women professionals by the book, you know, and not just, I don't know, it's, it's a frustrating topic for me. And hopefully in the future, we'll get closer to, you know, closing that gap and uh, getting the respect that I think we, we deserve.